been a while since we talked last you hate me even more than time has passed and I can't believe it's happening to me and I can't believe it's happening to me 
Mr. Tallyman, Tallyman Banana, daylight come and me wanna go home. De, mi se de, mi se de, mi se de. Alright. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's your girl Simone Titania, and you are back for another episode of the NDC. <laughs> You guys, I am so excited to be here today because I have a very special guest. Her name is Kiana Major, and she is also my little sister. <laughs> hey, Kiana, how you doing? Hey, Simone. How's it going? It's going well, going well. I'm so excited to be here. So glad we can be back here for a second season. Me too. This right here feels surreal. It does. I remember when we were creating the idea of context of our generation. Mm -hmm. And we were building our organization for mm -hmm. local artists because we felt we didn't have the support. Yeah. And look where we are right now. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. uh, providing support for us and other people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone has never listened to your music before, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. you had to explain what your music sounds like in one word, what would it be? In one word? Uh, I would say lush. Lush? The way that I like to make music and create music. Mostly the, the type of music I write is from my feelings, it's from my emotions, and it's a way for me to express what's happening inside. And like, that's just the words. And then when I get into like the melody and the harmonic like part of it, then it's another idea of, of like modal interchange and how I can tell a story that's not too, um, like Disney-ish, right. but also expresses what I need to express through my emotions. And like, that's how the music ties to the emotion, but also ties to the words. And then like the production behind it and the arranging and the dynamics also is just a lot. Yeah. It's not a wall of sound, but it is definitely a journey. Okay, and explain to me what the process of tapping into your emotions to then be able to tell a story, to mm -hmm. then be able to <laughs> make a song out of that. Give me your process on that. Well, I feel like it's it, like in an example, if I'm, cause I, unlike what my uh, music teachers and like my songwriting teachers would say, I'm a very motivated person when it comes to being motivated from within. If I get, I call it like signals mm -hmm. or it's like little pushes that force me to go someplace and write this out, record this, take, take it down for the moment because it's important what's happening inside my head or it's not even in your head, it's like mm -hmm. just within you. And you know, it's so interesting to hear you say that because when you're making your music and when you're performing it and I listen to it, you really stand out to me as an artist because you're not one of those cookie cutter artists who has a two minute song and that's it. Mm -hmm. You stay to you stay true to your storytelling. Mm -hmm. And if it has to be a 10 minute song, mm -hmm. I've noticed that you will make a 10 minute song. Yes. So tell me about that. For me, like music should be music, regardless of genre, regardless of where it's going to be played at. I don't write music for the intention of you know, for it to be on a movie, for it to be on the radio, for it to be on a TikTok, a minute long <laughs> song. But I, I write music to tell a story of here and now, you know, for future generations to be able to listen. And even if they're not gonna be able to listen, at least my story or the story that comes out of me is recorded down somewhere in history. Absolutely. And multi-instrumentalist, mm -hmm. how many instruments do you play? I don't know. I just, if, if, if it has like strings, pads, um, uh, hammers, <laughs> I don't know. If, if, it's, if it's in front of me, I, I will most likely try to play it. And as long as I can wrap my head around it, like music wise, I can definitely play it. 
Um, except for the flute, I cannot play flute. Oh no! That is the one instrument I can. Any not wind play. instruments? At all? No, I can play wind instruments. I can play oh. saxophone. I can play baritone sax. I can play uh, trumpet, trombone. I can play. I can play a recorder and like the the, the natural wood flutes, mm-hmm. but I cannot play a a metal flute for some reason. Right. Are you all self-taught? Uh, yeah. I started off in band. In, in marching band and then I just kind of reached out to different instruments and I started playing um, piano and um, I had a guitar when I was a kid but I didn't really learn how to, to, to play an actual, I had a toy guitar which were like buttons and stuff mm-hmm. and I didn't get a uh, actual guitar until later in life and I didn't really learn how to start playing it until I was in high school, mm-hmm. getting out of high school into college. So it was about 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. I mean, by default, as your sister, I'm just going to bring this up. I remember you practicing your music constantly, Mm -hmm. whatever instrument it may have been. Mm -hmm. You were learning that saxophone. Mm -hmm. You were learning those drums. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Your keys, Mm -hmm. everything. And I'm just so honored and proud to see where you are, Mm -hmm. you know, in your elevation and your growth and your journey. And I think people who have never heard you play before, they're also amazed, especially when you're on stage. You know, you take us somewhere else uh, with your songwriting, with the instruments that you use, Mm -hmm. uh, your synths as well, Mm -hmm. I think is such a cool effect to have. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about performing. What is that like for you? Performing is is something I both love and fear. Mm -hmm. Um, Growing up, I, I don't know if, I'm pretty sure you remember when we were at the, it was some sort of function at school and we had to answer a question and I knew the answer (laughs) and I raised my hand up as high as I could. Yes, you did. And the presenter picked me to, 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 to uh, answer the question and I froze Mm -hmm. and I could not answer the question. And um, from then on, I had a, like a fear of being in front of people, not in front of people, but like performing, talking uh, in front of a large crowd of people. And then I started playing music. And when I started playing my music, I started to feel more comfortable on stage. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? We are right here at Wool Studios. This is where we are shooting the NDC. And we want to thank Wool Studios so much because they are one of our community supporters and we appreciate all our community supporters. If you're an artist or business looking for a place to shoot anything that you can think of, they can do it. Okay. So hit up Wool Studios. They do hourly rentals and you can book it right on their website. It's really simple. Woolstudios.com. Thank y'all so much. Again, check out Wool Studios and make sure you're checking out the NDC too. All right. All right, y'all. Peace, thank you. You currently have music on Spotify. I do, I do. What are some of your songs about on, that you have on Spotify currently? Um, so, Divested is pretty much just about listening. And that's a, uh, an instrumental piece uh, between a Contra Bass and a Fender Rhodes. And I came to that, that song idea in terms of I had never played a Fender Rhodes before that, before I had sat down in the studio to, to play it. But I always knew about it and I always wanted to, to, to be able to play it. And the first time I knew that the instrument was like an instrument to be heard was in a uh, Led Zeppelin song, mm-hmm. St- um, Stairway to Heaven. Okay. When like the, 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 the big part opens up at the closer to the end, okay. there's just like a huge Fender Rhodes just like stomped down in the bass and I was like, that's an amazing instrument. Right. And I wanted to bring out the full like bass tone of that instrument. And I was like, cool, let's, let's do a song around listening. And uh, it's pretty much just a conversation between two instruments. Um, what's so, your dream instrument? Sorry to cut you what's off. What's my dream instrument? My dream instrument would probably, like, I think the, the, the most difficult instrument for me is vocals because it's it's an instrument that I cannot hide behind mm. in terms of what I know, what my knowledge is. Right. And like, I can't upgrade, you know, uh, gear-wise. Uh, you know, I can't get a, uh, 
a thousand year old vocal larynx and put it in mine sure. even if it might sound better if it even if it came from 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 like a, a great singer in the past uh, the instrument that you have in your vocals is the one that you have and you're stuck with it forever now if you can define and create your own genre of music mm -hmm. what would you call that I'm, I'm I would call it music I don't I don't really like the idea of having like genres mm -hmm. and separating music into classes because I feel like it's definitely uh, like race involved in terms of like the history of where it comes from um, I would rather just have you know just people listen to music and like that's what people do nowadays it shouldn't be hindered because like oh no I don't want to listen to rock music you know that's the devil's music or I don't want to listen to gospel music or I don't want to listen to country music because that's country I'm like there's some good country music right. you know Absolutely. you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to like limit yourself to just being stuck in one lane. Would you prefer mm -hmm. to be signed or would you prefer to be independent? I think it would depend on the label. Um, I don't mind sharing some of the revenue if the label puts work into, you know, the creation of the product. Right. Um, put it uh, in terms of uh, marketing, in terms of distribution, um, in terms of placement, because labels still do have the most amount of pull in this industry. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of um, creative intent, yeah. I don't think I would like hinder that. If you can offer a piece of advice to someone watching right now, mm -hmm and they are looking to be an emerging artist, mm -hmm. what type of advice would you offer them? So my advice would just be to think outside of the box, not even like just outside of the box, think outside of yourself. Like if you only grew up in a certain area, I think you should look for people who do other things, not just to like copy them, not just to, to befriend them, not just to use them, but find different areas of life that you enjoy and that inspires you as a creative to have a holistic view in terms of what you create, you know? Cause it's, it's I think having a very narrow world view, musically, artistically, fashion wise, it really limited, it limits your life experience. And that's not something that I think equates to a, a well-lived life. That's a wrap for this episode of the Indie Seat with my beautiful baby sister, yeah. Kiana Major. I wish we could talk more. I love you, Chica. Thank you so much for stopping through to the Indie Seat. Of course. Koal TV. Of course. All day. <laughs> All right. Peace. Sweet.
What's up, guys? That's right, it's your girl, Simone Titania, and I am in the building today to tell you about our sponsor, Epiphany. Epiphany Hair and Body Care Products is my go-to, okay? A lot of y'all be reaching out to me about my hair, and I'm gonna tell you straight up, this is what makes me do what I do <laughs> um, and be great, even on those days that I am waking up for the NDC and can't be great. I just spray myself with a little Ajabu spray. Um, this has a little bit of tea tree, aloe, and everything you need to keep you fresh for your body and your hair. This right here, this is the shea butter, okay? It's Ajabu shea butter. And yes, you can use them both together. I use it for my hair and for my body. This is to set my styles when I do my braid outs, my twists, to keep my feet moisturized, if you know what I mean. And this right here, everyone can use. This is a little bit of light and breezy oil, and you could put this on your face. Um, singers, you can even put this a little bit on your fingers and put it right up in your throat, and it just relaxes you right before your performance. And this is called light and breezy oil. Anyway, I just wanted to come straight to you guys because I get the question all the time, but this is the answer, okay? Epiphany Hair and Body Care Products. 
made right here in Miami, Florida by a beautiful black woman, okay? And uh, make sure you support Epiphany here in bodycare.com. Thank you so much for always supporting us, Epiphany. Peace.